Seton, Washington, a quiet suburb with prestigious homes, manicured lawns, and tree-lined streets that embody comfort and security. Among these peaceful streets lies the Ferguson home on Grove Crescent, a seemingly perfect family. Peter Ferguson, a successful attorney, his wife Martha, an interior designer, and her son Andrew, a college student. Peter Ferguson was a respected attorney known for defending Seton's elite and becoming one of the most influential lawyers in the region. However, behind his professional accomplishments, he hit a personal struggle. Growing up in a religious family, Peter realized from a young age that he was different. He recognized his homosexuality early on, but suppressed his feelings out of fear of rejection. In high school, he felt isolated and lonely, bearing his only intimate experience with another boy at the age of 16, convincing himself that he could live according to societal norms. Peter built a successful career and personal life. In 1998, he met Martha, and their romance led to marriage. However, in 2003, at the height of his career, his suppressed desires resurfaced. Peter began seeking anonymous connections with men online, leading a double life. His encounters with strangers, like Mark Rivers in 2006, intensified his paranoia. By 2010, he was involved in regular secret relationships, trying to maintain the appearance of a perfect life. In 2013, he met Luke Harrison, a young man who became more than just a fling. Luke became a threat capable of destroying everything Peter had built. Martha Ferguson was an attractive and confident woman whose success as an interior designer only underscored her independent spirit. After a failed first marriage, Martha raised her son Andrew on her own, and by 2000 she had made significant strides in her career, earning a name for herself among Seton's local elites. Energetic and hardworking, she took pride in her home, a place she had lovingly created as a cozy and stylish space for herself and her son. July 1998 marked a turning point for Martha. At a charity event she helped organize, she met Peter Ferguson, a successful lawyer with a charisma that immediately caught her attention. Their romance developed quickly. Shared interests, future plans, and mutual support created the illusion of an ideal union. A year later, in August 1999, they married, and Martha, along with her eight-year-old son Andrew, moved into Peter's home. For Andrew, who had grown accustomed to his mother's solitude in the absence of his father, the adjustment was difficult. His father had left the family when he was only three years old, and since then, no contact had been maintained. When Peter entered their lives, Andrew didn't immediately accept his new stepfather. The teenager was cautious and distant in his interactions with Peter, often keeping his distance, especially during the first few months of their new life together. However, Peter was not just a powerful attorney, but also a skilled manipulator who knew how to earn trust. He began investing significant time and effort into his relationship with Andrew, helping him with his studies, introducing him to sports, and even taking him to events where he could meet well-known architects and designers to foster Andrew's interest in a future profession. Gradually, by the end of 2002, a bond started to form between them, which Martha believed to be strong and healthy. It seemed that Peter had become a father figure for Andrew. They spent time together at training sessions, discussing Andrew's future education in college. Andrew, who had initially kept his distance, began to respect and trust Peter. By 2004, they had become not just relatives, but genuine friends. This closeness appeared to strengthen the family, yet no one could have imagined that deep inside, Peter was harboring very different feelings. Meanwhile, Martha had fully immersed herself in family life and her career. She proudly showcased their home to friends and clients, unaware of the growing tension beneath the surface. The Ferguson home became her sanctuary, where she could balance her creative work and her role as a devoted mother and wife. But her busyness and confidence in their family's harmony blinded her to the warning signs that were beginning to affect the relationship between Peter and Andrew. Andrew Wallace, now 21 years old, seemed to be the embodiment of a young man who had it all. His life appeared perfectly set, charismatic, intelligent, and successful. Andrew aspired to a future in architecture, and his ambitions were evident to anyone who knew him. Enrolling in a prestigious university in September 2012, he quickly established himself as one of the most promising students in his class. Andrew was not only intelligent, but also physically attractive. Tall and athletic, he drew the attention of many girls on campus. Having played tennis and swum competitively since childhood, 
He continued to engage in sports at university, which kept him in excellent shape and further increased his popularity among his peers. Despite this, his popularity did not make him arrogant. On the contrary, Andrew was known for his kindness and willingness to help others, which only strengthened his friendships. By 2013, Andrew was no longer just a promising young architect. He had become a true star in his social circle. He often attended university events and meetings with professors and architects, thanks to connections he had gained through Peter. These interactions only fueled his ambitions. Andrew envisioned a future where he would build not just houses, but true masterpieces. His ideas and creative approach impressed both his professors and mentors. However, by this time, his relationship with Peter had begun to shift. Initially, Peter had been a mentor, a role model, and a father figure for Andrew. They discussed not only academics, but also personal life, sports achievements, and future plans. But by 2014, Andrew started noticing something strange in his stepfather's behavior. Peter's attention had become obsessive, and his compliments turned into something more personal and unsettling. One day in April 2014, after a tennis practice session, when Peter picked Andrew up from the court, he suggested they go to a restaurant to take a break from the everyday grind. The evening started off normally, but as it went on, Andrew noticed Peter's odd stares and touches that lingered a little too long. At first, Andrew brushed off these feelings, attributing them to a misunderstanding, but such instances began to repeat. Gradually, Andrew began to feel uncomfortable around Peter, who seemed to become obsessed with his accomplishments, appearance, and even physical presence. Although they continued to spend time together, the tension between them only grew. By June 2014, just months before the tragedy, Andrew noticed that Peter stayed home more often when Martha was away on business trips. Peter became increasingly clingy, and his obsession was becoming harder to hide. Andrew didn't know how to react. On the one hand, Peter remained an important figure in his life. On the other hand, his behavior was becoming increasingly disturbing. Once, Andrew even confided in a close friend at university about his suspicions, but he received no support. His friend suggested that Andrew might be exaggerating. However, the internal discomfort continued to grow, further heightening the tension in their relationship. By August 2014, Peter's behavior had become increasingly strange. His attention toward Andrew was no longer just odd. It was becoming frightening. Andrew tried to limit the time he spent with his stepfather, but every attempt only seemed to escalate the tension. Since 2010, Peter Ferguson had been sinking deeper into a world of secret encounters with much younger men. He used dating apps and frequented exclusive elite clubs in major cities, hiding behind the perfect facade of a family man. These encounters became regular escapes from reality, filling the void of his suppressed emotions and the stifling life he had built around himself. March 2014 marked the beginning of the end for Peter's carefully hidden life. During a trip to Los Angeles where Peter had traveled for a business meeting, he met a mysterious young man named Luke Hamilton, 25, in a private club. Luke was charismatic and confident, and Peter felt an immediate attraction to him. They quickly became involved, but as in previous cases, Peter believed he could control the situation and keep everything secret. What he didn't realize was that Luke was not like the others. He wasn't going to be so easy to manage. May 2014 brought an unexpected twist. Peter accidentally ran into Luke at a local bar in Seton, where Luke was socializing with a group of students. It was then that Peter was horrified to realize that Luke was a classmate and friend of his stepson, Andrew. This encounter marked the beginning of Peter's nightmare. Luke, seeing the surprise and fear on Peter's face, began to suspect there was more to their connection than a mere coincidence. By June 2014, Luke had already begun to piece together the strange dynamics between Peter and Andrew. He started testing Peter's boundaries, introducing manipulation into their interactions. Luke began to show up more frequently at places where he knew Peter would be, deliberately fostering Peter's sense of paranoia and fear. Peter tried to avoid Luke, breaking off contact and convincing himself that it would all soon be over. But Luke had no intention of disappearing so easily from Peter's life. July 2014 was a critical point. Peter was losing control over his feelings for Andrew. His secret meetings with Luke only intensified his inner conflict, and his obsession with his stepson became unbearable. 
Each day, Peter became more aware that his attraction to Andrew had crossed into forbidden territory. His relationship with Luke, uh, which Peter had initially considered insignificant, now posed a threat to both his personal and professional life. Luke began to show up more frequently around Andrew, stoking Peter's jealousy and fear of exposure. By August 2014, the tension had reached its peak. Luke started dropping hints to Peter that he knew about Peter's feelings for Andrew and could use this information against him. Peter was trapped. His obsession with his stepson was spiraling out of control, and Luke was manipulating his fears. The carefully crafted life Peter had been hiding and controlling was beginning to unravel before his eyes. Luke Hamilton, having realized that his connection with Peter Ferguson was far more than a casual affair, began to play on Peter's fears. Luke wasn't just another lover. He was a cunning and calculating manipulator. Knowing about Peter's involvement with younger men and his obsession with Andrew, Luke decided to use this information for his own personal gain and pleasure. He issued his first demand to Peter, a large sum of money, threatening to expose his secret life. On August 10, 2014, Peter received the first message from Luke. If you don't want your family to know who you really are, transfer $10,000 to this account. Luke threatened to reveal everything, not just to Martha, but also publicly, which would destroy Peter's career. Shocked and terrified, Peter, under immense pressure, agreed to the demands, hoping this would put an end to the blackmail. But from that moment on, Luke began extorting money from him regularly. Luke went further. He insisted on continuing their intimate meetings, threatening that if Peter refused, he would expose not only their relationship, but also Peter's disturbing behavior toward his stepson. Luke knew Peter was on the verge of breaking and skillfully used this for his own enjoyment. Peter, fearing exposure, was forced to comply with Luke's demands, which only further eroded his mental state. Peter was spiraling into chaos. He was losing control over his life as paranoia took hold of his mind. He feared every call and message, dreading that it would be another threat from Luke. At the same time, Peter tried to maintain the illusion of normalcy at home. He became increasingly withdrawn and irritable, which Martha began to notice as she grew more concerned about her husband's well-being. Andrew, too, started noticing changes in his stepfather's behavior. Peter was becoming more distant, distracted, and tense. Luke made his final move in the game. He told Peter that he would reveal everything to Andrew personally if Peter didn't pay him even more. Luke was playing with fire, knowing that Peter had gone too far to turn back. This became Peter's point of no return. In a panic, he began plotting how to escape the situation, but the more he tried to control events, the more they slipped out of his grasp. The mounting pressure from Luke and the internal conflict over his feelings for Andrew turned Peter's life into a living hell. He teetered on the edge of a breakdown, unable to see how to stop the maddening cycle of manipulation and blackmail. Peter Ferguson, now fully cornered by Luke's manipulations, decided he could no longer afford to be held hostage by the situation. He started acting more cautiously, trying to find ways to rid himself of Luke and close off access to his secret life. Peter made several attempts to cut off the relationship, but each time he was met with threats of exposure. Every conversation between them was now fraught with tension and suspicion. Luke ramped up the pressure, reminding Peter that his downfall was only a matter of time if he didn't meet his demands. Luke staged a scene outside the Ferguson home, unexpectedly showing up in the neighborhood under the guise of a chance encounter. Peter, terrified that his secret life could be exposed in front of Martha and Andrew, panicked. He tried to act casual, but his fears and paranoia grew stronger by the day. Luke relished the power he held over Peter, deliberately pushing him to the brink. Meanwhile, Andrew, completely unaware of what was happening, grew even closer to Peter. Though their relationship had always been relatively warm, in the past few months, they had become even closer. On September 12, 2014, after a family dinner, Andrew confided in Peter about his future plans and his architectural career. For Peter, this closeness was both a joy and a torment. His obsession with his stepson became increasingly apparent to him, even as Andrew perceived their relationship as just a normal family bond. Every touch, every compliment only deepened Peter's guilt while intensifying his emotions. On September 15, 2014, Luke made another unexpected visit. He ambushed Peter outside his office, 
demanding not just money, but also threatening to tell Andrew the full story. Peter was already on the verge of collapse. Dark thoughts of how to get rid of Luke once and for all were forming in his mind. Meanwhile, Luke grew bolder, enjoying the control he had over Peter and confidently pushing him closer to the edge. Parallel to all this, Andrew continued to grow closer to his stepfather, trusting him more and more. He confided in Peter about his future plans, his personal struggles, and his views on life. On the evening of September 16, 2014, after another long conversation with Andrew, Peter found himself in deep internal conflict. He realized that his feelings for his stepson had become too dangerous and destructive, but he didn't know how to stop them. The closer he got to Andrew, the more unbearable each encounter with Luke became. September 17, 2014, the tension in the Ferguson household reached its breaking point. Martha, noticing Peter's frequent absences and strange behavior, began to suspect that something was seriously wrong. That day, Peter met with Luke again, and a heated argument ensued. Luke insisted that if Peter didn't pay up, he would reveal everything to Andrew, which would destroy Peter's family. This threat became the final straw for Peter. He realized that this game couldn't go on any longer and began to seriously consider drastic measures to save himself and keep his secret from being exposed. From that moment on, every minute felt like a step toward inevitable catastrophe for Peter. September 15, 2014 started like any other day for the Ferguson family. In the morning, Martha left for a business trip to a nearby city, unaware that this would be the last day of their normal life. Peter, staying home with Andrew, was overwhelmed with anxiety. He knew that something had to happen that day, something unavoidable. That morning, he had decided to talk to Andrew, to reveal at least part of the truth and try to salvage their relationship. However, instead, events took a tragic turn. Andrew returned home after his workout, full of energy as usual. He had no idea that this day would be his last. Peter called him down to the basement under the pretense of discussing his future studies. This was a routine part of their relationship. Peter often gave Andrew advice on his career and education, and Andrew, trusting him, followed without hesitation. However, at that moment, Peter was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Everything that had happened over the past few weeks had accumulated inside him. He tried to talk to Andrew about the importance of trust and how difficult it could be to be honest sometimes, but his words came out disjointed and confused. Andrew didn't understand what Peter was trying to say, but could sense the tension. Meanwhile, Luke Hamilton was making his way toward the Ferguson home. He knew Martha wasn't there and was confident that Peter would pay up, just like always, to protect his secrets. Luke entered the house through an unlocked side door and quietly made his way down to the basement, where Peter and Andrew were talking. When Luke appeared in the doorway, the situation instantly escalated. Peter went pale at the sight of Luke in his home. Andrew was stunned. Luke, noticing their reactions, smirked and began to speak directly. He threatened to tell Andrew the whole truth if Peter didn't comply with his demands. The tension in the room skyrocketed. Luke became more aggressive pressuring Peter with new threats and blackmail. The argument quickly spiraled out of control. Sensing that his time was running out, Luke pushed Peter further, revealing more details about their past. Andrew, shocked by what he was hearing, tried to intervene, but his attempts only fueled the fire. He demanded answers, trying to make sense of what was happening. At this point, Luke, losing patience, shoved Peter aside and threatened physical violence. Pushed to his breaking point, Peter, in a fit of rage, lunged at Luke. Their confrontation turned into a physical fight. Andrew, horrified as his world crumbled before his eyes, tried to break them apart but didn't manage in time. In the chaos, Peter accidentally shoved Andrew, causing him to fall and hit his head on a metal shelf. Andrew lost consciousness, and his injuries proved fatal. Realizing the situation was spiraling out of control, Luke tried to flee, but Peter, now in a blind rage, struck him several times. The fight continued until Luke lay dead on the floor. Peter, now in complete shock and horror at what he had done, realized that the two people who had meant the most to him were now lying lifeless before him. Peter stood in the basement, surrounded by the bodies of Andrew and Luke. His mind was paralyzed. He couldn't comprehend the full magnitude of what had just happened. The day that was supposed to end his suffering had turned into a horrific nightmare from which there was no escape. 
September 15, 2014, 3.30 p.m. Seton police received a call from a concerned neighbor who had heard shouting coming from the Ferguson home. When officers arrived on the scene, they were confronted with a horrifying sight. Two bodies, Andrew and Luke, lay dead in the basement. Peter Ferguson, sitting on the floor, appeared paralyzed with shock. In a state of total disorientation, he changed his story several times, trying to explain that it had been self-defense. He claimed that Luke had broken into the house with threats and that the tragic events unfolded during the ensuing fight. The police began processing the crime scene. Peter, still in shock, continued to give contradictory statements. He mentioned blackmail several times but didn't offer a full explanation. The officers began to question what had truly led to this terrible incident. Crime scene investigators found clear signs of a struggle, but suspicious marks on Luke's face in Peter's hands pointed to a deeper conflict than just self-defense. As the search for evidence continued, police made a startling discovery. They found a hidden surveillance camera in the basement. When investigators reviewed the footage, they uncovered fragments of previous arguments and conversations between Peter and Luke, casting doubt on Peter's self-defense claim. Additionally, Luke's cell phone revealed messages and emails exchanged with Peter, filled with hints of blackmail, threats, and money transfers. This revelation shocked investigators. It was clear now that this wasn't just a spontaneous fight, but the culmination of long-buried secrets and escalating tensions. Peter was taken into custody for further questioning. Investigators began piecing together the details of his life, uncovering his secret relationships with men, including Luke. As more information about his double life came to light, it became clear that this wasn't just a tragic encounter, but the result of years of suppressed emotions, manipulation, and hidden desires. September 16, 2014. Under the weight of evidence and pressure from the investigators, Peter Ferguson decided to come clean. He confessed the entire truth about his relationship with Luke, the blackmail, and the threatening messages that had pushed him to the edge. The hardest part for Peter to admit was his feelings for Andrew, which had crossed all boundaries and ultimately allowed Luke to manipulate him so effectively. Peter also explained that this internal conflict had led to his complete breakdown on that fateful day. After listening to Peter's full confession, the shock reverberated through everyone involved, especially Martha. For her, the revelation that Peter had harbored unhealthy feelings for her son was a devastating blow. She couldn't believe that the man she trusted more than anyone had been living such a double life and was capable of such a betrayal. Martha, utterly shattered, struggled to process everything that had happened, but the realization that her family had been destroyed from within was unbearable. Peter's emotional collapse also became clear to the investigators. He admitted his guilt, acknowledging that his obsession and inability to control his feelings had set off a horrific chain of events that ended with the deaths of Andrew and Luke. His confession exposed the dark, hidden undercurrents that had been brewing in his life for years. This moment marked a turning point in the investigation, as the detectives finally understood that this case wasn't just about blackmail, but also about suppressed emotions, dangerous obsessions, and deep internal conflict. Now before the court stood a man who had destroyed his family and himself under the weight of secrets he had carried for years. October 2015. The trial against Peter Ferguson began a year after the tragedy. The case garnered significant public attention due to the shocking details that had emerged during the investigation. The prosecution sought a life sentence for the double murder of Luke and Andrew. Their case revolved around Peter's cold betrayal, his manipulations, and his suppressed desires, which ultimately led to catastrophic consequences. In the courtroom, the focus was not only on the killings themselves, but also on the hidden motives that had poisoned the family for years. Peter's defense team attempted to argue emotional instability and manipulation by Luke. They portrayed Peter as a victim of blackmail who had been driven to desperation. They claimed that Peter acted under severe psychological pressure and was unable to control his emotions, leading to the tragedy. The defense emphasized that Luke had played on Peter's repressed emotions and pushed him to the brink. However, the prosecution presented a different narrative. Peter was not just a manipulated victim, but a man who had hidden dark secrets for years and betrayed those closest to him. The prosecutors highlighted his obsession with Andrew and his secret relationship with Luke, 
which had ultimately been the catalyst for the murders. Key evidence included surveillance footage from the basement and messages between Luke and Peter, revealing their conflict in Luke's blackmail. November 17, 2015. The trial concluded with Peter being found guilty of double murder. The court sentenced him to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The judge called Peter's actions deeply selfish and destructive and emphasized that his secret desires and obsessions had led to the deaths of two young men. This marked the end of Peter's life as a free man and shattered any remaining trust that others might have had in him. Martha, who had attended every court session, was devastated. She couldn't comprehend that the man she had loved and trusted was capable of such horrific actions. Her life had been shattered in an instant. Losing her son and being betrayed by her husband turned her into someone who now had to start over from scratch. Martha could no longer answer the question of how long Peter had been living a double life and why she hadn't seen the signs. Seton, a small, tight-knit town, was shaken by the revelations of this case. Local media seized upon the story, and it became one of the most talked-about events in the region. People were shocked at how long Peter had lived a double life and how his dark desires had led to such a tragic outcome. Interviews with neighbors revealed that many had seen Peter as a model citizen and devoted family man, never suspecting his hidden desires and horrific deeds. Friends of the Ferguson family expressed their shock at the revelations. Many couldn't believe that Peter, whom they knew as a respected lawyer and dedicated father, was capable of such things. The community didn't just discuss the tragedy itself, but also grappled with the larger question of how such secrets could exist in a close-knit, seemingly perfect town. This story also brought attention to the issues of blackmail, repressed emotions, and how hidden desires can destroy lives. Journalists and community leaders began to speak about the importance of recognizing early warning signs and cautioning people against living in secrecy and suppressing their true feelings.